Hello, this is Mike. Social media is often seen as a conversational business model, and that's a point I typically make again and again. It's crucial to the social media planning cycle and its implementation. But as we can see from our diagram, all of that begins with actually what element of a conversation? Listening. To have a conversation, you need to listen and not just to speak. And really, a lot of the more traditional mass media marketing does some listening and an awful lot of speaking. What we're trying to get through social media is a more transactional process. So that's what I want to think about for the next few minutes. The listening element. To listen. We need to think about why it's important and come up with some types of conversation that as a business we need to pay particular attention to. So those are my two themes. Organizations need to listen to understand what their customers and other key stakeholders think about them. It's as simple as that. If we cannot uh, understand what people are saying, if we can't hear what people are saying, we can't begin to speak to them. It's really straightforward. And we don't, through social media, want to go into the old trap of relying on third parties to do our talking for us. The days of the mass advertising agency were characterized by, we do a bit of market research ourselves, we hand it over to a third party, they interpret the data for us and craft a message. And that message is sent scattergun-wise to key segments through different media. Social media takes us away from that and back to a more traditional conversational business model. So what we need to do is utilize the power of Web2 and all of the associated hardware devices that's surrounded to engage in an old-fashioned form of business, talking to people and, most importantly, listening to what they have to say and what they need. Web2 has brought about a fantastic democratization, at least in terms of information and its dissemination. It doesn't take huge amounts of technological skills to be able to be a publisher or a broadcaster. Anyone with a smartphone can effectively start their own mini TV station. Social media has allowed everyone to get their views out there and that includes our customers and other key stakeholders. You know, people live their lives in social media every day. If they're saying, I had a really bad experience yesterday at the Little Toad restaurant. Well, the Little Toad restaurant is not going to get many of the people in that person's network visiting it for a meal this evening. It's as simple as that. We need to know what's been said. The conversational business model is wholly dependent on listening. I'd say they need to be far more emphasis on listening than actually talking. You know, we need much more than the old customer survey a couple of times a year if we're lucky, and the market analysis of our competitors and our peers. We need to really understand consumer behavior and engage in a dialogue with them. Conversations will happen out about our brand, whether we like it or not. Someone will be saying the Little Toad Restaurant service let it down yesterday. Much better if the Little Toad Restaurant is able to join that conversation, say, sorry folks, we messed it up last night, and put things right. The capital from listening and acting is much, much greater than we think. There are different types of conversations going on out there, of course. So I just want to highlight some of the key ones any organization planning a social media implementation should pay particular attention to. 
There have been conversations about our company, our firm, our brands, our organization, if we're a not-for-profit. There will be conversations about our competitors, the sector and category we all inhabit. But there are also conversations that give us a clue to the tone of the community, uh, how people currently feel about us and perceive us. And there will be different types of conversation taking place through different social media channels. Let's just briefly think about each of those. In terms of conversations about us as an organization, we need to know what people are saying and whether what they're saying is good or bad. We want to know their feelings towards us, how they perceive us. What problems or issues are they associating with us at present? The poor service in the restaurant, for example. Um, we, we need to go much deeper, though. We want to know what gaps they see, because it may be we're just missing a trick. Um, perhaps there's a service we can introduce that might satisfy a need and it's just coming out through conversation. And we need to understand where these different types of conversations are taking place. I'd also include in that the temporal dimension. Do they comment on the Little Toad restaurant the day they're in there, the next day, a month later when someone happens to bring up the conversation in the conversation about restaurants? That time lag can give us a clue to the action we need to take too. There'll be similar conversations about our competitors. You know, what are people saying about them? How do they feel about them and perceive them? What are the key audience segments talking about there, the competitor? And are they the same ones that are talking about us? Perhaps different segments have different views of the two main organizations, for example. How are the advantages and disadvantages of choosing them or us, one against the other? Um, how are they being expressed? And you know, what types of conversations are working and not working for our rival? Don't just listen to people what, what people are saying about the Little Toad restaurant. You know, if your main rival is the Big Alligator restaurant, find out what they're saying about them too and what types of conversations they're having with that restaurant. And, you know, what messages are the competitors putting out there about themselves, about us, about the industry? Think about our sector or perhaps a product or service category is more important depending on your industry. What are the key segments saying about that? How do they feel? Positive, negative, ambivalent perhaps? They just couldn't care less about the Little Toad restaurant. What are the topics that people are most interested in talking about generally? You know, what is it about restaurants that are currently topical? Choice on the menu? Healthy options? What is it that's key that will give us a clue to developing our business? Are there any common themes that perhaps are under or overrepresented? And what are all the different players saying? What can this tell us about the general operating environment? Then there are the questions that are more difficult, those that reveal the tone of the community. How are all these different stakeholders interacting with each other? What are the customers saying to each other about us, our competitors, or the industry in general? What terminology is being used? You know, some of the great marketing slogans over many, many years have come from understanding the daily language that the key customer groups are using and crafting a message that uses the same type of uh, slang, same type of jargon, the same language. We have to talk the same language. What are the words and attributes most commonly associated with us and our competitors and in the industry? You know, customer brand association maps very traditional marketing tools are really useful here. How are all these different actors responding to each other? And what's the general sentiment and etiquette they're following? Don't jump in and join a conversation with your customers unless you understand the rules of the conversation. You could just be seen as you know, intruding rather than participating. And finally, there are conversations that take place that vary from channel to channel. 
because each channel is favoured by a particular segment over other channels, it will quite naturally have different types of conversation going on. Are there any particular tonal differences, content differences, thematic differences between them? Which channels are, do we appear to have the strongest and weakest following in? And you know, what types of customer are inhabiting them? You know, I know an organization in the business to business sector, manufacturing components, that was very pleased with the positive views of it emanating through Twitter. Unfortunately, Twitter was not inhabited by the people who were most likely to be the industrial buyers procuring their products. So the wrong group of people evaluated that manufacturer positively. It didn't really matter what the Twitter users thought. They were all their people who would actually purchase their components inhabited an entirely different channel. And sometimes, particularly because we like to hear good stuff about ourselves, we typically overlook the importance of that. So listening needs to be done in a very informed and strategic way. Think about all these different types of conversation, what opportunities and threats they highlight for us, what strengths and weaknesses. All types of conversation are important. So remember, a conversational business model is exactly that, conversational. Don't just focus on the talking, talk about the listening too. And think about the conversations that are going on about us, our rivals, the category as a whole. Understand the different tones of those conversations and any subtle differences across channels.